Let's now stand and bring our praises to the Lord.
everyone. My name's Jeff Litchfield. I'm a worship leader here at St. Uniting Church. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning. We especially want to welcome to all those who are watching us online as the service is being streamed live on YouTube. For any of you who are here for the first time, please make yourself known and by catching up with us after the service and during our morning tea or contacting us via the church office or online on our socials. We are happy to meet you. Do you feel tired at the moment? I know I do. The world groans. The weight of expectations, the bitterness of years, weigh heavily in our souls. Worry and anger gnaw in our minds like rats chewing on our small store of patience and happiness. Long are the days since God walked with us. In this lead up to Christmas, this Advent, we all wait in anticipation who wait, held in the promise of prophecy that a chosen one will come and save us from the forces that oppress us. For the people of Judea almost 2,000 years ago, they did not know his name, but in our age, we know a little more about this Messiah. They did not know exactly why he came 2,000 years ago, but in this new age of grace, we echo the same desires as those early Jews a desire for the coming of the true kingdom of God that defeats the power of corruption of the world that oppresses the hearts and minds of the faithful believers everywhere. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us portents and signs of the coming of your chosen king. During this season, give us the patience to wait faithfully. The world tests us always but you have left us with enough hope to deal with these trials. We know that your kingdom has promised so much more than what the world can deliver. But we know that your word is true, even if we are not. How easy it is to pick up, to, it is to slip back into the ways of the world 
to fall into despair and into the numbness that hides our light to those around us. The world leaves us dirty with the sin that clouds our light and dims our view of the kingdom ahead, separating us from a right relationship with our Heavenly Father. How can we approach you or the King? Your word tells of one who will prepare the way, one who in the power of Elijah will cleanse our hearts and make straight our souls. In this season of Advent, let's prepare the way for the coming of our true King, Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, now we have our, new year, our actual good news spot. Do we have any good news in the congregation at the moment? Anything that... Yes, Barry's alive. It's good to see that he is there. And we're very thankful that prayers all across our church have been made fulfilled in his presence right here this morning. And yes, it looks like we've got some new fans installed as well. So we're very thankful for them. I think uh, Phil Livesey just went and installed them just before. So we're very thankful for them. The other good news is Gary's out of hospital. Uh, he's back home, uh, but he is on holidays. So um, hopefully he's enjoying his holidays. Okay, let us now sing our next uh, pr uh, the praise song, The Days of Elijah. Oh, my God. 
We will now wait on you for your free will offering. Oh yes, there will also be announcements played on the actual screen above, just to uh, bring up the speed about what's happening in the church, in the actual lead up to things, and also, and also there are rosses on the table for uh, our actual uh, Christmas Lights Festival, so please if you can actually serve in any way, in any capacity, please place your names down on the rosters if you can. Heavenly King, as your servants, we wait for your return, knowing that you are the font of all blessings that we experience in this world. You've equipped us for, to bring your example to all around us. That example is of giving as the Father is giving and serving as you have served. Please bless these gifts of money and effort this church have offered her this week and that they may bring, be used to prepare the way of your word entering into the hearts of more humanity every day. Amen. I've been asked to actually read a very special prayer uh, from the actual moderator of the Church of Queensland. And this is in light of certain ads that have been about uh, historical abuse of children in the care of Uniting Church daycare centres. And I'd like to actually bring that prayer to you right now. Gracious God, we come in weakness and in sorrow there is no word that we can offer that will undo what has happened. We join with the words of the psalmist and cry, my soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? It is with humility and contrition that we express our deep regret and sorrow for the abuse suffered while in our care. When we take on the care of vulnerable people, we assume a solemn and sacred responsibility to protect and safeguard all those who are in our care. We acknowledge and lament the trauma and injustice of those heinous crimes committed. We acknowledge and lament the grievous violations of trust and the unfathomable suffering of the victims and their families. We acknowledge and lament the wickedness of the sins committed against innocent children. We acknowledge and lament our failures. We lament and grieve the abuse suffered by children, both in our care and in our centres. We acknowledge and lament that we employed a man who committed horrific crimes against children, abused our trust and that of the children and their families. We acknowledge and lament missed opportunities to shine the light of truth on the darkness of these crimes and prevent further harm. We acknowledge and lament the deeply felt heartbreak and outrage of our community. We are sorry. 
We submit to the pain and the chastisement of, these, of this moment. As a church, we acknowledge the weight of trust placed in us in caring for children, young people and those most vulnerable. And we recommit ourselves anew to their protection and safety as our highest priority. Holy Spirit, our earnest prayer is that you would be present and that in the midst of trauma and heartache, you might bring peace, comfort and healing. We particularly name the many families and children who have been impacted by the actions of one, uh, of one person. God bring you healing to the broken, comfort to the suffering and your peace to all. In the name of the one who binds the brokenhearted, who does not break the bruised reeds, who does not snuff out the smouldering wicks, but who brings forth justice in his faithfulness and who reconciles all things, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll now continue with our prayer for the world. Dear Lord, wars and rumors of wars beset our world. In places like Ukraine, Lebanon, Gaza, South Korea, and now even in Syria. Only our Messiah can bring peace to the world, and we await his return to bring peace to everyone. I'll also want to speak of the forces who want to bring about food insecurity across the world in diverse places like India, Canada, United Kingdom, and the Netherlands. We ask God to lift the veil from the faceless bureaucrats who wish to attack our farmers and reveal them as the hands of those who wish to profit from those who need the food the most. We know that we struggle against powers and principalities first and not against flesh and blood. Give us the patience and the courage to face these dark forces into the strength of Christ. Let us pray also for all those who are touched by the scourge of narcotics across the world. Drugs are a prison that holds many captives. It is an insidious shadow that's, that speaks to the whole in many people's lives that so many try to fill with false things. May we fight this war of emptiness to free souls from drugs with our prayers and kindness. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. This is our prayer. These are our prayers for Australia and our local community. We pray for our Jewish brethren here in Australia as they cope with a noticeable increase in anti-Semitism, particularly after the firebombing of a Melbourne synagogue. Let us pray for all the local churches as they prepare for this Christmas season. We look forward to the good parts of Christmas but also recognise that this is a season that brings pain to many. May we, may we be ready to aid those who are dealing with loss and hurt this advent. We also want to pray that our land is spared from the terrible heat wave that has been predicted. Such high temperatures are devastating for both the oldest of us and the youngest. Amen. We now pray for members of our family, our church family. And Lord, we want to lift up Ivy especially because she is um, having a difficult time and she really needs our prayers. So please keep her in mind, she's not well. And as we prepare the Christmas Lights Festival, Pray that Christmas lights can successfully convey the true meaning of Christmas to all who visit and participate in our lives. And let us lift up all those who are unwell of mind, body and spirit in, from our congregation. We pray protection, healing for them, that they will see the real beauty of Christmas in all who are caring for them. We especially want to lift up Reverend Gary and Deb. They have been tireless servants of our church and we wish them real rest this Christmas. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. The Bible reading today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 60, 68 to 79, and Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. They can be found in the Pew Bibles in the New Testament on page 832 and 834. From Luke 1. Blessed be the God of Israel, for he has looked favourably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty saviour for us in the house of his child David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy he promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness in his presence all our days. Our new child will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. It's the proclamation of John the Baptist. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was, Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Aturia and Traconitis and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Preparing the way for Christmas. We here at the church have been preparing the way for the Christmas lights event since September. Others are only just starting preparing for Christmas and still others haven't even begun to talk about it yet. Christmas trees, wreaths and lights and appearing, are appearing in numerous locations around the place. People are getting ingredients for their Christmas baking, preparing cards, presents are being bought, and Christmas messages are being sent out, and attending Christmas breakout functions as it gets closer to Christmas. Bad news, it's only 17 more sleeps to the big day. Some are already prepared, but others are not, will not be totally prepared prepared until the last minute. Historically, the, this season of Advent, Advent is a time of meditation, worship and reflection. It is a time to withdraw from the worldly activities to spend time in quiet reflection. But for us, the season of Advent can become busy, overwhelming and fanatic. Instead of reflecting on the arrival of the Prince of Peace, the days of Advent can be anything but peaceful. During the season of Advent, emotions can run high. It's easy to lose patience and forget who we are as, a Christian, as Christians with a Christian faith. 
I think Gary might have been right suggesting that we stop, stop the activities on the Saturday to have a break before Christmas Day to reflect upon God's coming that first Christmas. But even in this hectic time, we can still have peace if we focus our attention on Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. How are you preparing for Christmas this year? Are you keeping your focus on Jesus as you head into this busy time of year? As we look at the Bible, we can see preparing it all the way through it. Since the time of creation, God has been preparing the way. In Matthew Henry's Bible commentary in Gen on Genesis 3, 14 to 15, he writes, A gracious promise is here made of Christ as the deliverer of fallen man from the power of Satan. Here was the dawn of the gospel day. No sooner has the wound been given than the remedy was provided and revealed. The gracious revelation of a saviour coming unasked and unlooked for. God has been preparing the way from the beginning of time and is still going on today. God is still preparing the way for the return of Jesus, as I spoke about last week. We don't know when it will happen. Only God knows that. But we need to be prepared. God prepared the way for Joseph to become the second in charge of Egypt to save the Israelites when the famine was about. Joseph may have not anticipated not appreciated how that had happened. But Joseph said to his brothers when he met them, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it, is, it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been a famine in the land and for the next five there will be no ploughing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you as a remnant on the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Then God organised most of the safety, organised for the safety of Moses when he was found by Pharaoh's daughter in the bulrushes. Because of this, he was able to lead the Israelites out of Egypt into the Promised Land. As we come to today's reading, we find the foretelling of the birth of John the Baptist. In the beginning of Luke 1's chapter, we find Zechariah, John's father, serving as a priest before God in the temple when an angel appeared to him. Then an angel appeared of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will call him John. How did Zechariah react? Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. Due to this, Zechariah, Zechariah leaves the tem temple unable to speak. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until this day happens because you did not believe my words, which have come true at their appointed time. When he came out of the temple, the others realised he had seen a vision because he was unable to speak. After his time of service was complete, he went home and Elizabeth became pregnant. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, 
God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to Mary, where she was told of the who all in the story, and Mary heads off to talk to Elizabeth. As Mary enters Zachariah's home and greets Elizabeth, Elizabeth hears Mary's, Mary's greeting. The baby leapt in a womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But I, why am I so favoured that my mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached the ears, reached my ears, my baby in the womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who believes that the Lord would fulfil her promise to her. John knew from a baby that Jesus was special and he had a role to play in preparing the way. John also recognised where he stood as he testified, the one more powerful me than me will come is after me and I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the straps of his sandals. I will baptise you with water but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Now John probably met Jesus numerous times over his lifetime because as we know John and Jesus were cousins and even as a baby John recognised that Jesus was special. He recognised that he was the one. He was the one God was sending to save the world. John was the one who had an opportunity to see Jesus start his ministry and gave testimonies testimony testimony to those who came to his baptism. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptise with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. John was telling everyone that Jesus was the Messiah. Now John was preparing the way for the people. He was telling them, repent for the kingdom of God is near and that Jesus was the way. John was preparing to point the way to Jesus because he knew that he was the one God had sent. It wasn't all smooth sailing either. Following John's birth, when the neighbours and relatives came to circumcise John, they were going to name him after their father Zechariah because there was no other John in Zachariah's family tree. And it caused caused quite a stir. And they made signs to the father to find out what he would name the child. He asked for a written tablet and everyone was astonished when he wrote the words, his name is John. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue was set free and he began to speak, praising God. Zachariah doubted, but now believed and got his voice back. And then goes on to sing Zachariah's song in verses 68 to 79, praising and prophesying. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, For he has looked favourably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty saviour for us, Jesus, in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old, that he would save, that, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hands of those who hate us. Thus he has shown mercy and promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to his ancestor Abram to grant us 
that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, John the Baptist, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord <coughs> to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people and forgiveness for their sins. By the tender mercy of God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the ways of peace. John was the one who was preparing the way for Jesus' first coming on that first Christmas day and on into his ministry. The child we remember in 17 days' time, but the story isn't finished there. John didn't see the culmination of Jesus' Messiahship when Jesus died on the cross and rose victorious on the third day. The preparing didn't stop with John because, he, as I spoke about last week, Jesus is coming back. Jesus' disciples starting to prepare the way of the second coming as they followed the, Jesus' great commission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I will surely be with you until the very end of the age. Our roles as his disciples is to follow that tradition and making disciples for Jesus, leading them to the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the way. Christmas is a time to remember Jesus came from his home in heaven to come as a baby to live on earth and show us the way to the Father. But more importantly, the role he played in our salvation is what we need to share with those who do not know him. Are you prepared like John, to be like John and share the good news of Jesus to those you come in contact with? Let us go out into the world and be wit his witnesses, preparing the way for the second coming this Christmas and throughout the coming years. In Jesus' name, amen.
As you go out into the world, may God go with you to share the love of Christ with those you meet. In Jesus' name, amen.